Welcome back to your newest favorite podcast, Beards and Bitcoins, where BitBoy and J-Chains get together each week to talk about crypto and things happening in the community. They will bring you some special guests and giveaways, so make sure you're subscribed. For all show-related news, you can find the guys on various social media outlets. Everything is listed on the official show Twitter account, at Beards Bitcoins. Now, without further introduction, two dudes that have beards like Bitcoins and want to talk to you about both BitBoy and J-Chains. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to your favorite podcast, episode 24 of Beards and Bitcoins. Uh, I am your host, BitBoy. This is your other ho- uh, co-host, J-Chains. What is going on, J-Chains? What is up? What is up, everybody? Hope you're having yourself a great week. It's been a uh, just a couple of days since we saw you last. I uh, hope you enjoyed the news episode. Uh, We are super excited about today's episode. This is just a regular old beards and bitcoins. Get down to the nitty gritty. Hanging out with the boys. We got stash on today. The stash in the house. How's it going, guys? Thanks for having me. Good. Good to see you, man. Stash in the house. But, dude, what's up with the no beard? I mean, can we let you on the podcast here? I I don't know. I kind of thought about that. I mean, I think I qualify. Like, you guys can't have beards without mustaches. No, nope, that's, that's true. true. That's true. And I that's mean, a pretty sweet. That, that kind of like. What's and look, with, and look at this glorious stash, man. How could you not? How could you not love but, that? But and all I, I want to focus on right now is not the stash. I want to focus on right below your chin. You have the world's smallest beard right underneath that. Yes, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it is. You I got, got a little, little soul patch. Here. You got a little soul patch going on. That's because I got soul, brother. Oh, love it, love it. All right, solid. We'll let you pass. Yeah. We'll we'll let you pass. So well, uh, beard. that's awesome. Yeah, awesome. So we're gonna talk about uh, talk to Stash about some education stuff today. That's one of his big things in the crypto space, and who knows where the conversation may go to. We all like to talk, so we'll have to see where it ends <laughs> up. Uh, Stash is a good friend of mine and J Chains uh, in the Satoshi Droppers, our little group on Twitter um, that we've been in for quite sure. a while. And uh, what's the status of the Satoshi Droppers website right now, Stash? I'm glad you asked, Bitboy. <laughs> so. Yeah, we, you know, we've been kind of, I've been working on this website for the Satoshi Droppers, which is like, uh, you know, BitBoy said is our our kind of our our creator group here. And it's comprised of a lot of really cool people, awesome, you know, uh, friends, and we're making our own website that kind of like aggregates all of our stuff into like one big pile of stuff. So you guys could go there, you guys can check all of us out, see what we're really all about. We're going to have bios of each of the Satoshi Droppers on there with links to all their socials and then a big social wall. So you can see all the content coming out all the time and mm-hmm. hopefully some other stuff up there, like, uh, you know, combined projects that we're going to be working on and uh, ways to, you know, get us to, to work with you. if you want to work with Satoshi droppers, do we, do we have the beards and bitcoins up on the Satoshi droppers? Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. That's all we need. It That's links, all I need it, to know. It's going to link everything. So it's, it links, yeah. uh, your, uh, th- basically three platforms we're going with is like Twitter, YouTube, and uh instagram so uh and then so we can also link uh, rss feeds too for for websites but in general i think hitting all of those we get everybody's stuff yeah nice. i'm i'm super excited about it first of all i've seen the website already and it's very high quality I love what you've done with it um but a lot of people don't know this a little satoshi droppers group we're, we're gonna be running stuff here in you know the next couple mm-hmm. of years uh you know we, we've got some twitter accounts uh that are not in the satoshi droppers that I would say have first movers advantage have kind of been, you know, in the, you know, crypto Twitter and the crypto community a little bit longer, but we've got some, mm-hmm. some big power players in the Satoshi droppers are so really excited to see, you know, where, where that's going to develop. And speaking of the Satoshi droppers, uh, J chains, you got a little meetup you're doing here, uh, pretty soon, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes, actually it's, uh, so it's tomorrow night right now, but when you're listening to this, it's tonight, LA. So I'll uh, I'll speak more about it when we get to our shout outs. But yeah, downtown LA, Boomtown Brewery, 6 to 8 p.m. with uh, Crypto Wendy O, Stash, maybe he's going to be there. Crypto Stash will be there, man, with the Stash Ooh. on you point. Can, you can Drink always count. You can always count on Crypto Stash to be there. I tell you, I oh, landed yeah. in LA when I went out to shoot my pilot for Crypto Cake. And Stash was like, I'm on the way. He was the first one to come. <laughs> he, came to he came and knocked on my hotel door. I was like, whoa, Stash. I did, on? and I got a special. I got a special stash coin. I got it here in my office somewhere. I have to find it, but yeah, you know. Oh yeah, I got this. is This is one of them right here. Special this edition. Is, this is my stash coin, but it's limited edition. Yeah, I give these. They're wooden, actual wooden tokens that are numbered. I only made forty one of these tokens, and I give them out to special people, like when I meet them or something. They do something nice for me or whatever it may be, and so yeah, I give these out to like special friends and stuff. So there's, they're definitely super limited edition. 
That is, I think I, I have to, may have to give you one, Jay Chains. We'll see, man. Maybe, maybe you burned one. Maybe you burned it. Ooh, my man. Ooh. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Token burn. Nice, nice. Well, cool. Well, guys, let's move <laughs> on to our Twitter shout out. Uh, our Monarch Token.io crypto Twitter shout out, where we shout out people on you know crypto Twitter that are doing big things. Brought to you by Monarch Token, which you know we talked about the Celsius partnership last week. Always doing big things with Monarch Token. It's and really the wallet as well. Um, or Monarch yep. Wallet is doing big things. So you guys make sure Great you check job. them out. Uh, you can find all their social media handles from uh, their website, monarchtoken.io. So here we go. Twitter shout out. Who's going to go first? We even talk about that. How about let's 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 yeah, let Stash. Go ahead, first. Stash, you go first. I'll go. Right, I'll, go yeah, I'll do my Twitter shout out first. So, you know, this is actually uh, one of my followers. He's not like a, another follow, a fellow content creator or project manager or, or someone who is big in this space. But uh, I got this this uh, like you know tag from him the other day. And I thought it was really cool. So he says, uh, 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 "Crypto stash, I was lucky enough to land one of your engine beam stashes uh, and sent it to my son's wallet to commemorate and indelibly record the day of his first shave." Thanks oh, wow. for helping us make a fun memory. And so I don't know if you guys have seen, but like I, I teamed up with Engine Coin uh, about a month or two back, and I minted my own coin. It's called the Stash Coin, Stash Loop. And so I, I gave out these stash loots in a, in a competition, and he got one, and he, he he sent it to his son as a cool commemoration of his son's first shave. And wow. so in response, I was like, "Oh, that's so awesome! Glad to be part of your memory." Uh, and this was from uh, John Jacobson. John Jacobson, my follower. It's uh, at J Jacobs Shebe, Jacobs Shebe. And uh, yeah, and I, so I sent him another stash loot, so he would he would have one, and his son would have one. Oh, awesome. very cool! That's, that's a good cool. story. Yeah, I like that. That's right. And, and you know what? That's, in beard shaving, you know, he had to shave, but and we're in the parlor we're as in you the can shop see right now. Yeah, that's that's a uh, that's a feel good story. That's a good Twitter shout out right there. Yeah, good I job. thought so. Bit boy, what you got, Doc? No, I said I'm going last. I want to hear. Oh, right, lay this on, lay on his chains. Okay. Let's hear it. All right, so I'm going to shout out my boy Mike Neasy real quick. Oh, um, I love Mike Neasy. Mike Neasy, man, he, he's he's always. He's fun to chat with. We've been doing some uh, some Snapchat videos back and forth, uh, so he's a fun guy. Uh, exactly. Also, I want to. I'm doing a double. I'm going to do a double. Uh, the other part is what you talked about earlier uh, to Crypto Windio, and then anybody that's out there in LA, stash you part of it. Uh, anybody else that's going to be at the meetup tomorrow night, Boomtown Brewery in downtown LA, six to eight p.m. Come say hi. I think there's going to be like giveaways and stuff too. Crypto Windio's got a bunch of stuff on her. Uh, on her stuff and you can find I'm gonna it. bring you know what I'm gonna bring a crypto cake hat look I got one right here Ooh, nice these nice. these are limited edition coveted crypto cake hats crypto, crypto cake TV coming oh yeah they say they say huh? soon we'll <clears throat> see we'll see what yeah going things, on with that. things are they're, they're still yeah, we'll see. turning <laughs> things are turning things are definitely the wheels turning. Are turning from what I hear we'll see you know it's yeah. you, know, you never count those chickens till they're hashed though I mean right, well, here here's we'll, the we'll thing we'll hopefully talk later could, could you imagine launching anything in this market you know, it's so hard. it's hard, but they, you know, they tell us they're making progress and moving ahead. I'm, I was in a real tricky spot with Crypto Cake because I, like, I found out that this was a thing that was going on after I had already put my house up for sale. And I didn't know if I was going to be like moving out to LA soon or yeah. what, but now like we went ahead and settled and have a rental here in Atlanta. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm like more settled and stable. So now it's just like, whenever it happens, it happens and it's good. If they delay it a few more months or, you know, wh whatever the case may be, I'm, I'm going to be good either way. So real excited to still be involved with it. And, um, right, you know, right. maybe if we, if the markets are turning around right now, then it might be some good timing, but still, still yeah. yet, yet to be seen. So, well, all right, well, we, uh, we look forward to the updates. So what you got, what you got for, okay. So yeah. I'm going to shout out uh, a guy who makes a lot of really funny memes, um, on Twitter is Crypto Fungus. So a lot of you guys, well, I should also double that by shouting out uh, money underscore a lot of, that's A-L-O-T-T-A. -T um, so got to kind of give you the backstory. So money a lot of, uh, he makes banners for people on Twitter and they're phenomenal. Like his graphic design level is above, in my opinion, just about anything else I've seen on, you know, in terms of creativity and, 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 you know, execution. It's, unbelievable some of the banners he's made and so uh that's not a shot at stash who's also a graphic designer <laughs> but i know he's sitting there like it looks great it's awesome i know he's sitting there like i know i can do it i know i can do it. But anyways, so, <laughs> no I, I it was a great job I, yeah. I i i said something about it. i complimented yeah. it 
thought so, it was awesome. So, All right, Stash, how about you make one for me and then we'll put them head to head. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're doing there. I see what you're doing down there. So, so, so Money A Lot of made me this banner and, you know, it was, the results of it were incredible. Absolutely phenomenal. It's me wearing a BitBoy suit and it looks way better than the real BitBoy suit I wore uh, at World CryptoCon on Halloween. So, <laughs> But I saw it, I saw it, and, like, I immediately knew, like, okay, this is really awesome. It's unbelievable. I'm going to use it. He gave me a little logo with it. Really cool. But I immediately knew that, like, grown man in spandex superhero suit is probably going to get memed on Twitter. Like, I kind of knew it was coming. And so Crypto Fungus made this meme today uh, of me dressed as BitBoy with the Justice League. And it, <laughs> it is so funny. I saw it, and I laughed so hard. I showed it to my kids. I showed it to my wife. It, you know, th there's been some other memes that have came out of it, but that that was my my favorite one. So shout out to him for making that, and uh, you know, shout out to Money Alada for making the original artwork. You guys can see it. Just go to my Twitter at bitboy underscore hodl and check out my uh, my banner. It's also I made it my YouTube banner too. So and then I made a it's funny stupid, little bit little cool. intro with uh, the meme today on my video. So yeah, that picture is super cool, man. He did a great job. Yeah, phenomenal. That's super cool. So good shout outs. Yeah, good shout outs. We should shout out our own shout outs. You know? <laughs> Y'all did a good job on like shout outs. Okay, guys, so let's get into it. Let's start talking here. So, Stash, if you could tell us a little bit about, you know, <clears throat> what made you decide to kind of get into the education side of crypto? Because, you know, there, there's a lot of different arenas when it comes to cryptocurrency in terms of content creation. There yeah. is trading, obviously. There is mining. There's news. And then there's education, and and you have done, you know, I, I believe some news videos and some different stuff on your channel, but mainly it's education. So, like I said, what what led you into that, and uh, you know, and things like that. Sorry, my daughter's yelling in the background. So, <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah, man. Uh, in, in general, you know, I I kind of got started in the scene in late 2013. And that's when I first bought my, my first Bitcoin. Uh, I had seen it kind of prior to that. And then I kind of just sat on it because I was like, I, I knew I had to get in it. I knew that it was something that I was going to be interested in. I knew it was the future when I really learned about it. But like nobody I knew, nobody I had ever talked to, all the business connects that, that I was, uh, you know, uh, uh, familiar with and people I worked with on a daily, nobody talked about it. No one was ever saying anything about Bitcoin. I wasn't, you know, me personally, I wasn't in those those circles where I had friends that actually... I could talk to about it. And so I kind of just sat on it for a couple of years and then 2016 came around and that's when I was like, you know, Hey, I, I, I want to see what's going on with my Bitcoin. And I kind of looked back in the, in the scene and, you know, I realized things had gotten way like you, like a lot more uh, robust, a lot more robust mm -hmm. in the, in the entire cryptocurrency ecosystem. You know, when I bought, uh, and it was right before this crazy bear market that we had in 2014. And I just kind of hodled through that whole thing. I didn't do nothing. I just kind of sat on my little, you know, um, mm -hmm. amount of Bitcoin in Coinbase. And then, you know, in 2016, I was like, well, it, you know, it'd be great if I could have, uh, you know, try and maybe get some of my friends involved in this and see what they think and get their opinions. And so I tried and, and they were all like, you're an idiot. It's a scam. You know, I don't want to hear about this. And no one ever wanted to talk to me about it. So I just kind of felt alone. And so I was like, well, you know, maybe if I could like just make a blog or something where I can kind of talk about my, my adventures, the same things I am learning about, you know, that I'm learning about. And, you know, from, from my own perspective, just as kind of a, like not even, you know, anything particularly significant, just a hobby. That's really where it started as I just started this really simple website. I didn't have a plan of like, oh, I'm going to be a crazy content influencer or educator or any of these things. It was just an outlet for me in general because I didn't have anybody to talk to or relate with about cryptocurrency. And me being a tech guy, always, you know, been in the tech world for, for most of my life. Uh, I just didn't really have a lot of friends that were particularly in the tech world, you know. I'm also a musician, so a lot of my, my friends are musicians or artists uh, uh, and, and people of that nature. And so I just, you know, uh, I, I use it as a way to kind of get going. So I started the blog in the beginning of 2017, the CryptoStash.com. And, you know, I was like, well, you know, mustache kind of goes with my mustache. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny and came up with a logo. Obviously, like you said, I'm a graphic designer, so I do websites. I run a web design uh, and development company here in Long Beach. And so I had all these skills that like made it really easy for me to do something of pretty high quality. And so I just started posting my stories. I didn't really, I didn't like, I didn't even have a Twitter at that time. I didn't have a YouTube. I didn't have a Facebook page for anything. Like I wasn't really promoting in that kind of way. I it just it was this website. And so 
anytime I talk to friends about it or any of my clients from my web design business, I would say, oh, I have a blog. You can go, you go look at my blog. I kind of talk about that stuff there. And if you really go back into my blog, you can see like a lot of the first posts were, were not as focused on crypto. There were, I talked about other things and gaming and some other stuff too. And there's, and so wait, wait, just, hold on. There's, there's other stuff than crypto. Yeah. There's other things out there, man. There is. is, I know. We're we're stuck in our little crypto bubble, but (laughs) it's out there. It's out there. But, but, you know, crypto has definitely, like, taken over a large part of my life, and and I've moved and gravitated more and more towards it over these last couple years. So, yeah, uh, early 2017, I started the website and started doing articles, and then all of a sudden, you know, I was, uh, you know, uh, answering questions from friends every once in a while, but then all of a sudden, I started getting strangers, Mm. people I didn't know asking me questions, posting comments. And, you know, uh, hitting me up uh, through, through the website, you know, sending me emails. And I was like, huh, well, maybe I can help these people too. And just they can follow my journey and maybe they'll learn something from my mistakes or learn something from my, my triumphs and from, from my successes in, in the industry. And so I still at that point didn't really have much direction. And so I just started creating a little bit more content, you know, kind of going through some, some basic, uh, you know, stuff as, as far as like, well, what is Bitcoin? You know, what is a wallet? You know, what are, how do these things work? You know, because I, I like one of my strengths is being able to relay technical information in a very simplistic form that a lot of people can understand very easily. So that's really where I kind of come from. And that I think is what has driven my desire to help educate people. I like being able to, you know, relay those things in a way people understand. And so I kind of started moving towards that direction a little bit more and more during uh, 2017. Uh, I started, uh, I, and then the, the end of 2017, I actually held my first in-person Bitcoin beginners class. I had 25 students. I rented a space, and we got a bunch of people that were in their computers, and I had a presentation. I'm there in my cool like tie and stuff, and always <laughs> yeah. looking cool, looking sharp, man. And so that was kind of like where that was really the kind of kickoff of me understanding and realizing like I want to help educate people in this space and and be as helpful as I can in regards to understanding the technology because there's there you know as far as you know you see out there in crypto twitter and these other spaces people who are already in the space you know there's so many people who aren't and should understand some of this technology because this is the future this is where we're going no matter no matter what people say or what you see in the headlines or what you hear from major bankers or your your buddies that don't believe it think it's a scam 100% financial and currency wise, this is where we're going yeah, as a, as a global economy. It's without a doubt. And so I just try and help people who maybe don't get that to get that a little bit better. So yeah, that was the beginning just... stash. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's really good, man. You know, it's, it's one of the things that I think is going to be really kind of pivotal to really get a more of a mass adoption. Cause I remember when I first started, when I got into crypto, the learning curve for me was just like, what did I get myself into? Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. And so like, there is so much, there's, there's a bunch of stuff you got to learn if you want to get into it. And so, yeah. you know, hats off to you, man, for, you know, for doing that education stuff, because it is important. It's how people are going to get into it and, and do it without getting scammed, <clears throat> excuse me, or losing their crypto. Right. And that's what I try and help out with, you know, so the, the content I do now, you know, now we've kind of gone through this uh, huge, huge uh, bull market that we run that we had in the end of 2017. You know, I still wasn't really on Twitter or YouTube or doing things. And so I kind of missed that as far as following wise and people kind of really seeing my stuff because I wasn't, I wasn't really in the community as much then, you know, I, I wasn't really into in the community aspect, uh, but I was still just doing my own thing on my website. My website was huge. It was popular. It was popping off. I was, I get really great uh, search engine result rankings and, and organic traffic. So a lot of my articles have, have been read, you know, hundred, 200,000 times. Wow. And, but, you know, in general, I wasn't a very, you know, community focused person at that time. And that's one thing I think that I really uh, am proud of in 2018 is that I kind of uh, found more community. I found you guys, the Satoshi Droppers, honestly, were what drove me to be more community focused and to be more involved in the cryptocurrency community at large versus just kind of being the standalone guy who was, you know, doing his website articles. And so I, then I moved into video in 2018, late, uh, I don't know, May or or uh june ish may may i think is when i really started my youtube channel started doing content and uh yeah so now i and, and then i started a podcast recently i moved one of my live stream uh, my video live stream uh, show that's been pretty popular called stash my crypto into a podcast and my like i guess i'm just really trying to find better ways to be helpful to people to give more value back to people so these people uh you know that are new to the space or even people who have been in the space for a long time 
you know, can get a different fresh perspective. You know, I would try and be as impartial as I can. So I do a lot of project reviews and, you know, uh, one of my popular ones is my hardware review series. I've been reviewing a lot of hardware wallets lately and yeah. So I just try and find the best of the best and then drive people towards and say, Hey, here, here's what I think is the, the really great stuff that makes it easy to do crypto or to learn it or, you know, the, these, uh, these articles that, I, that I've written to, to guide you step by step on how to do things. Yeah, it's good. I, I think, man, so c creating content in crypto is, is weird. So when, <laughs> when, when you first start, you know, like it really is it like, I look back and it's just, you know what? It's like anything else in life. If it's anything yeah. that you're doing that you're good at, you always look back at when you started and are like, God, I can't believe right. anybody watched or listened to me because I didn't even, <laughs> because I didn't even know anything, you know, yeah. like when I first started my channel, like I've been in crypto since 2012. Well, just like you was not ever involved in the community until 2017. And you know, the, the thing about it is, is like, I, I knew enough to start a channel and talk news stories. But mm. man, when I look back at what I didn't know, you know, like, and, yeah. and, and through making content, it pushed me to know more and to learn more yeah. and to research more. And, you know, I was talking to, uh, I was talking to a guy recently, uh, who's in the space and I was just blown away by how little he knows, you know, <laughs> like, I'm not going to out him and say who it was, but there are, there are a lot of them out there, man. Ooh, I was just sitting there like, man, I, this guy hardly knows anything. And, you know, there are people listening and following him and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I, w I don't want to down anybody, but the, the education piece is just so important and you can't learn it overnight. You have to have resources yeah. to go to and learn over time, whether it's through watching videos or whether it's through going and reading, you know, I, I find a lot of my information out, the, kind of the way I research is by reading stories, news stories. And then when there's things in the stories, like I don't quite grasp. I go and I research those further until I can right. really put it together, you know, kind of like, you know, context clues almost. But, yeah. um, you know, it really is amazing how, <laughs> how little. And I'm not saying, like, if you compare me to obviously, like, you know, the stash even. If you compare me to a lot of people, like, there's a lot of people in crypto that are way smarter and way more than I know. Um, but, you know, at, at the same time, I, I feel like I know a good bit about crypto. But you always got to push yourself to learn more. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is about crypto, it's such a new, exactly. new space. Nobody's an expert. Nobody's really yeah. an expert, you know, and it changes so quickly too that, you know, there, there's always more room to learn and to grow. And that's what, you know, that's what I kind of do with my content as well. You know, when I'm doing these, these articles or I'm researching for something, like someone will ask me a question. I don't know. I'll tell them straight up like, I don't know, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go put time into that. I'm going to research it yeah. for you and I'm going to put a sweet video out or an article out that, that shows it step by step and exactly how what I think about it or what it is or my technical perspective of it. And so that's what I really enjoy doing. And so there's a lot of people out there that do similar things as me. I I, I think that, you know, hopefully people enjoy my particular view of things. They love my mustache and, you know, <laughs> and, and want to follow the content stuff that I'm doing. So it's a learning journey for me too. I, I want to learn together with my yeah. with my community. You know, I don't want yeah. to be talking at people. I want us to learn together as a community that we're creating. So we have that. And that's one of the biggest things I learned last year is about creating community within this cryptocurrency space is, is actually one of my huge, you know, uh, goals as well. So I run a local meetup here in Long Beach, California with my buddy Gaston. We both actually started cryptocurrency meetups at the same time in 2017. And we're doing it in the same city and we just teamed up and he's an amazing guy. He's, he totally, you know, is into crypto, very knowledgeable. And then we have two of our other buddies, uh, you know, Sebastian and Mike that help us with the meetup. And, and it's been great. We have a lot of people come to it. And so, you know, but the community aspect is, is I think, a huge thing and in, in really growing and learning together um, as, as individuals, uh, you know, uh, but also as, as, as you know, people who, who work within a community. I think it's, it's a lot of fun. You bring up a really good point when you say that, you know, when you guys you know, are doing the same thing at the same time, you know, there's a lot of people that we are kind of all doing the same thing. And in a normal yeah. business, you know, you would consider that competition. But in this, like in this, I wouldn't consider that competition with anything because the more, the more videos someone watches, the more they learn, the more content you create, the more content BitBoy creates, the more content anyone creates, yeah. the more there's out there, the more people can learn from. So in, in, in an essence, you know, there's really no like competition per se. It's all just, I can learn from you, you learn from me and we all, let's teach everyone else what's going on. I, think that that I, I, I want to live in that utopia. And I, that's what I firmly believe. Unfortunately, not everybody believes that. And, you know, in any industry, 
I think that like right now we're really early in this industry. And, you know, because of that, there is a little bit probably more buddy, buddy stuff going on, but it, it may get cutthroat here at some point where, you know, you start seeing things being more business like and business oriented. And I think we've seen that here and there, but hopefully we can all continue to work together in this space and grow it and, and really change the paradigm because that's why I'm here. I'm not here just because I want a quick buck. I'm not here because I want a ton of followers. I want to be famous. I'm not here because, you know, I mean, ma mass adoption is great. I definitely want to see more mass adoption. I'm here because I want to see a, a real legit change in our system. Yeah, that is yeah. the reason why I'm here. That's why the reason why I love Bitcoin. That's the reason why I got involved in the first place, because it's a political statement and it's a statement of, of equality. And that is the reason why I, keep, I continue to pursue it. And, you know, there's undertones of those those kind of ideals that I hold and, and you know, that I think Satoshi Nakamoto also held when he created Bitcoin. And so I try and follow that and, 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 you know, push that element as well uh, as much as I can. Yeah. It, that's definitely, that's definitely true. I mean, I think we're all, you know, you have guys that are in it strictly because they like the technology because they're nerdy, I guess, but you got people that are in it just because, you know, they want the money, but yeah. you know, I'm similar to you. I mean, I'm, I really believe in the idea of cryptocurrency and the yeah, movement. The ethos of crypto. The ethos of crypto, right. But not, what a good, what but a not, good word. not the project ethos though. That's a difference. No. No. That's a that's a, a web based wallet, a monarch competitor. A I'm, not, yeah. I'm not not big which, on it. Which I did a review of. <laughs> I did too. My I did I did a review of it and it actually did really well. It was one of the, my first videos to actually get, you know, break a few thousand views. Uh, but yeah. then I learned a little more about the web wallet aspect of it and it's not as secure and it, it hasn't done very well. Um, yeah. but but back to the point of, you know, talking about business being cutthroat and I agree, like J Chains is right in, in terms of Right now, it benefits us all yeah. to, to help each other because oh, the yeah. only way we're going to grow as a space is to bring other people in, and collectively, we can do that. Mm -hmm. However, this will not be the case for much longer. Yeah. You know, I, Once we have mm -hmm. another bull run, the influx of people that will come in, at that point, the entire game will change, and this buddy-buddy thing won't necessarily be the case. If you take crypto youtube and compare it to other niches in crypto or in on youtube like for me a, a channel i got seven seven thousand subscribers i can do a review of something a sponsored review or sponsored content and i can get like at least 500 dollars in equivalent in cryptocurrency for doing one review now i don't do a ton of them but i can get yeah. that much right try, try going to another try going to the fitness niche on youtube and having seven thousand subscribers and getting 20 bucks for a video <clears throat> you know yeah we're such I Go ahead. No, I was gonna say I I I didn't know that, man. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a big YouTuber guy. I've not done a YouTube channel like that in that respect before. Yeah. So I, I just assumed that yeah, a lot of the other people were getting paid, you know, some similar amounts, but I guess not. Well, it, in other I don't do a lot of pay reviews either. So it's, yeah, in in other niches, I'm talking about in other niches. Yeah. You know, it's really hard because they're so oversaturated. You know, mm -hmm. like most most YouTube niches. Unless you have a million subscribers, you're not making much money. You mm. know, a hundred thousand in a lot of niches it isn't a lot. Um, and so we had my wife on the show early on, maybe episode three of, of beers awesome. and bitcoins. Yeah, because you know yeah. it's it's really funny because she's a mom blogger and she's been a mom blogger for years and years and years. And what inspired her to start doing that was watching YouTube videos or following blogs of really what would be considered the first generation of mom bloggers, right? Mm. The first generation mm. of, and not necessarily, not it, mom bloggers probably over, you know, overblown, but photography bloggers, mom bloggers, sure. uh, cooking bloggers, and things like that. And she watched the space at the very beginning when it was new and saw like the impact that these people had was not that great. But now, 10 years later, right? 10 years down the road after these other blogs have been around, these women are millionaires. They have their own yeah. fashion lines, their own cooking lines, their own cookware lines, um, you know, their own artwork, their own craft lines, their own yarn, you know, like they got so many different <laughs> things. And she kind of watched that from the ground floor and compares that to what she's seeing in crypto, which we're all new. You can, there's less than a hundred content creators that are known in the space. Uh, YouTube, you know, there, there might be a few more than that, but give or take about a hundred ish. Like if you go and you look at the, yeah you know, top lists, like they're all the same people over and over again. Yeah. You know, so it's really exciting to see what this space is going to be in a few years. 
And I tell my followers, you know, like, I know some of you guys want to accumulate, but I'm ready for that bull run because I'm ready to get the viewers up, you know? Because <laughs> there, there, there's not just a bull run on on price. There's a bull run on interest that coincides Everything. with that. Yeah. That's a, that's a good and point. That, that's what I'm more concerned with, too, is I'm, I'm looking for the bull run of interest. I want a bull run of yes. interest, man. I want to see more people being interested in it, wanting to learn about it you know, needing some help and me being able to help more people. Like really, that's, that's the reason why I'm here. I want to help more people to understand this. And so, you know, price is great. I, I'd love to see, you know, some of my moon bags shoot up and two, 2000%. So I, I could be a million overnight. That would be amazing. But that's not why I'm here. It's not why I ever came. And that's not my ever going to be my purpose. And if that does happen, I'm still going to be doing educational stuff. I'm still going to be, you know, trying to create community. I'm not going to go jet set the world and just leave everyone high and dry. You gonna be you gonna be doing Ty Lopez videos on the on the personal private jet? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, like, the I guess you could just certain point. Yeah, right. You could just certain point, and like I would love to go. <laughs> I, like one of the things, my goals for 2019 <clears throat> is to do more speaking engagements. I want to be a, a panel moderator at mm -hmm. at at, confer at blockchain conferences and crypto conferences, or be a panel guest. You know, I do really well on stage. I'm, I, I've been a musician for a long time, and so. I would love to be able to get more into that that side of things as well, and being able to present things a little bit more. Uh, like I said, I, I you know I'm working on some more course material. So whereas I was doing a in person course, I'm still gonna I'm still kind of doing that every once in a while. But I want to get some actual you know courses online where they're more of like a chopped up thing where it takes you through a whole process of learning. And I had one before, but it's a little bit outdated, and I just kind of retired it here not not too long ago. But, you know, yeah, I think that you're right. We're really early in the space and everything we do is this, is this is a stepping stone to, you know, what's going to come next. And, and who knows what that's going to be? I think we're all very early. And, and you're right. There's such a small handful of people doing this. And with the community we're creating right now is, is invaluable, in my opinion. You know, mm -hmm. with the Satoshi droppers, you know, the friends that I've made in that group are people that, you know, I hope to be friends with forever. You know, these are you, you guys are amazing people and, and motivated and intelligent and diverse, you know. And so th that is a huge boon, I think. And so that's one of the things I always try to push to people, too, is that, you know, we're creating a community here. Don't just come in and try and, you know, look for price action and maybe to be a quick millionaire. Try and try and look at it from the actual perspective of what this is going to change in the world and how we can work together to make that happen. Yeah, absolutely, man. The the movement is going to be incredible. The community is incredible. It's going to get better. There's definitely there's definitely some downsides to the community. You know, there's definitely some haters out there and stuff like that. But well, I mean, I mean, quality community. Yeah, the what? not not attracting a bunch of trolls because they got nothing better to do with their life yeah. but go around on social media with cartoon characters as their avatars talking mad shit wait on hold on hold on i have a cartoon character as my avatar you need to relax. <laughs> well hey feel free to change it man you should change it to your sweet uh new bit boy like uh, uh you know photoshop guy <laughs> well, that would be that's a cool that's a cool yeah, looking you know it's true it's but good yeah, abby but, cool. it's a good abby when, when yeah people abby. say that right when people say like oh it's a cartoon avatar and you're listening to their trading advice and stuff the implication behind that and if you're in the community you know this is that, you know, they're a person that hides behind that avatar and can't ever really be held accountable. However, sure. while my avatar is a cartoon character, I'm very out in the open. And No, you are. Exactly. Like that. Yeah, that, so that's a big difference. A You're different, right. Most yeah. of these people won't, they don't dox themselves. You know, they, no one knows who they are. They're not on video ever. And so that that's the kind of line. You know, when I got into the scene, I decided I didn't want to be that person. You know, I, I'm, I'm Shay. I'm the, I'm the stash. That's what I go by. My name's Shay Newkirk. You can find out all about me. Like, you know, I'm, I, you search me on YouTube or Google and I'm there. I come up. Uh, you get to see me. You interact with me. You know, you're talking with me. I'm a real person. That's, I want to interact with real people as well. And, you know, hey, it, it, you know, I, it's each his own. I'm not saying that people, every, every person with a cartoon avatar is out to get you. But in general, I think you're right. I think a lot of times people go that route because they don't want to be held accountable for what they say online. And I, I don't think that that's the necessary the best way well, for me personally. Don't let don't let them fool you with that sweet cartoon character. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. it's it, it's about when when you have a social media account and uh, you're you're able to uh, you you can project any kind of image you want, right? So yeah. you can pretend that you're you know some buff six foot four freaking bodybuilder. When you're really just a nerd in your mom's basement that, you know, it couldn't climb a gym rope, you right. know? So it's about... Catfishing. Yes. Yeah, it, it, in, a, in a way, it, it is, you know? It, it's it is. It's just a different way of going about it. Yeah. A hundred percent, dude. That, that's 
actually accurate. I, I like the way that you said that. So um, I still haven't seen the show. I know we had a whole episode on catfishing and you said that there was an MTV show. Uh, I can't bring good. myself to watch it. My mom even had a conversation. It's so good, it. dude. It's so good. I like it. I like it. You, you I, just, I just wow. can't like lose faith in people that much. When you're watching it, you kind of have to suspend reality. Like you understand. A, now, I don't watch it all the time, but sometimes I'll click it on and watch two or three episodes, you know, every few months or something like that, you know. Um, I'm just kidding. I have a have a nonstop subscription. It's it's <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say he's right got now. them all downloaded. He watches them on. <laughs> but it's a, it's something my wife and I can watch together. It's it's pretty funny or whatever. But you know, my my whole thing is kind of I always kind of be want to be a real person, just like you were talking about. You no know, people they can you know ask me real questions and they'll get real answers. And yeah, you know, like there's been people in my community that were just random people in my community that are now like friends of mine, like Armando that was just on the show um, this week and stuff. So. Well, let's let's move on. Let's talk about something that I think is probably a frustration that you have, um, and I've definitely had as well. Over the last couple months, maybe for me, it's changed like a tiny bit. But w- what is the frustration level w- when you're making content and like for some reason you're struggling to get people to watch it? Doesn't it feel kind of like, uh, you know, a, a, all because of the bear market, I believe. But for us, we're smaller content creators, right? Yes. I mean, we're not we're not fifty thousand fifty thousand subs and up, ten thousand subs and up. I'm not there yet. You know, sometimes you make a video and you feel like it's so good, and then it only gets a couple hundred views or whatever it may be. You know, so so what is what is that like? And 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 how can you kind of encourage people that may want to create content, but they, there's such a grind at the start to try to get yeah an audience. Well, you know, that, that's a good point. You know, I, first, I would say we're doing this, if you're talking about 2018 to right now, we're doing this in a bear market. So I think that anybody starting in a bear market or starting a project in a bear market or doing content in a bear market, you got to understand the interest is just at all time low. And, you know, these big numbers that a lot of these people have, that you're talking about 50K subs, 100K subs. I can guarantee you that most of those subs are not watching their content 100%. right now. Well, not 100 or, or, or they were I bought agree 100%. and paid for. Who knows? Yeah. It's definitely true. But in general, yeah. you know, I, I think a lot of people like me and you, we, we've scratched our way during this bear market. And we, every sub I get, it, you know, I cherish, you know, as somebody that hopefully really is, is uh, following my journey and participating and, you know, wants to be a part of the community and, and wants to learn together with me. But it is hard. It is hard to continue to create content on a constant basis. And then you're right, only 100 people watch it or only, you know, 200 people watch it. Because like you said, we're not, it's not like we're getting paid the big bucks. Maybe some people think that. Maybe you think, oh man, those guys making those YouTube videos, they're just getting paid. And it's like, well, when we're at this level, you don't, you, every once in a while, maybe you get a little bit of something here and there. Worthless you know, maybe you get wins. a couple of referrals because you, you, you show somebody a really great, great uh, product or, or website that helps them along their journey. Or maybe you have someone reach out to you and, and they, they, they really like you as a person. They want you, you know, to pay you to do a review or something, but it's not that often for us. And so to even, you know, consistently put out content like you guys are doing with this amazing podcast and, you know, what a lot of our other friends are, are doing in general, it's a, it's a rough go, you know, because we want to be consistent for the people who are still around her doing it. But, you know, it, sometimes it can be discouraging when no one uh, reads your articles or no one watches your videos. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, I, I, always, I also look at it like, well, yeah, it'd be great if I had more people do it, but at least I had 100, man. If I could reach all 100 of those people and I truly help them, I mean, that, that actually makes me feel really good. So that's a, one, that's a redeeming quality that I was looking at. And obviously, I learned too. So when I do these videos, it makes me uh, you know, a little bit better at, at speaking on, on camera or a little bit better at delivering you know, a very simplified topic or, 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 you know, that's comp- or it's delivering it in a simplified way that's a very complicated uh, topic. And so you know, just being able to know that I, I've at least helped some people get to that journey. That's, that's great. And, and you know, it would be, it would be, uh, amazing to have it to be thousands and thousands for each video or thousands and thousands for each piece of content you put out. But I don't think that's really realistic. You know, I like that's the consistency and I like being consistent. Like I try and put out three pieces of content every week. Now that's, that pales in comparison to the great bit boy here who, you know, is putting out like a piece of content almost every day. And there's a lot of content creators that do that. And they're like every day on top of it. And I envy you guys. Like, I don't, I honestly don't know how you can do it. I, I, I work really hard in my other business. So it's, it's a little bit hard for me to, to find enough time to do crypto stuff every day. But, you know, even with the three pieces of content I do, I still feel like, yeah, you know, maybe sometimes they're undervalued. I'm like, oh, that was a great video. Like I did this video about uh, this, this service called Lolly. And it's kind of like Ebates. If you know Ebates yeah. where you shop around, mm-hmm. it's a little browser extension and you get money back. Well, this one gives you Bitcoin back when you shop at popular places. 
And I did this video about them. And I'm like, man, this is a great, cool, you know, amazing service. I can't believe more people are not talking about this, you know, on like basic things like you, you're, 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 you're booking flights or you're, you're buying some of these popular brands like Macy's and some other, uh, you know, very popular spots. You can get Bitcoin back for that. And like, it just never really got a lot of traction. But then I get some crazy videos that, you know, uh, that do get traction. And I'm just like, wow, you know, and then BitBoy's like, you got to be more sensational, man. You got to get that headline and sell them. And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know. I try. I hate you know, it. Like I hate it. I had a, I had somebody who attacked me on my, one of my videos because, I, you know, the name of the video was $544 trillion into crypto. And I mean, <laughs> that that's the truth. I mean, the article, if you really looked at the article, it said, you know, basically the idea is all yeah. assets become tokenized. And if all assets right. become tokenized, then $544 trillion comes into crypto. But I, I was very clear on the video, like, yeah, just because we're tokenizing things doesn't mean that your bag of Tron is going to go up. You know, yeah. like and a lot of people don't really understand that. Uh, but right. the thing is, I had to make that sensational headline because that's what gets people to watch the videos. You know, it like, is. and somebody attacked me. I was like, dude, I promise when YouTube starts rewarding me for my content over my titles, I will change it because I hate yeah. it. I, I hate putting my face on thumbnails. I hate, I mean, right. the, the, the way we do it on the Beards and Bic, the way J Chains does it on our, our thumbnails is pretty good. It's subtle, but like, I always got to make a weird face and put it on there because, yeah, because, you know, <laughs> because YouTube, re YouTube doesn't necessarily reward you for having a face on your thumbnail, but people right. are more likely to click on something with a face, especially yeah. if, they, if they know who you are. They're like, oh, this sure. is a BitBoy video, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I the, get that. Yeah, I get that. I, I hate doing it though. And but but you're right. I, I think that that's a good point too for for new content creators. You know, sometimes I feel like you get pigeonholed because you see, oh, well, what is everybody else doing? I'm going to do it like that. Yeah. And I started to do that at some point too. You know, I kind of take a little bit from somebody here and say, oh, well, if they're doing this, maybe I could do something similar. But I've kind of tried to find my own groove, my own way of doing things. And you know what? A lot of times it's against some of those things, like you're saying, yeah. where I don't do like sensational headlines. You know, sometimes I, I you know, I do, clickbait. I do do that's the word. Clickbait. My face on it, but <laughs> clickbait, clickbait, but yeah, it kind of clickbaity, right? I try and avoid the clickbaity stuff. I just try and be very straightforward, informational and, and as impartial as I can be so I can present the information to people so they can learn effectively. But I do love put my face on those thumbnails because I mean, come on, guys. look at that thing. Look at that, look, I mean, look at that mustache. That's one thing we all got to agree on is we all have beautiful faces. That's um, true. Y'all are good that's looking. True. I'm good looking. It's really just perfect three men with facial hair here you know yeah three alpha males in here just oh just I can't chilling. beat it it can't can we call this episode beard stashes and bitcoin <laughs> just this one facial hair and bitcoins facial hair and bitcoins <laughs> yeah so, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll play with the title a little <laughs> yeah we, we we might we we need to make it a little more clickbaity i'm sure so yeah yeah but yeah and it, it, it's a frustrating thing though having to do it. i've kind of gotten used to it now at this point i try not to be too misleading I feel, I feel like if it's a if it's a clickbaity title and it's something I feel like I can't like it's not something that I've twisted into words that's true but it's like right. 544 trillion into crypto question mark like I always put a question mark at the end like somehow that yeah. makes it a little bit better like Ooh. I told you yeah, yeah 544 <laughs> you know so um but yeah so it's, but it's hard i mean I, and i get it that's what i'm saying i think people do that too because it, it is becoming this point where we're in a bear market interest is kind of low so you know when you see someone like that and people are flipping through the you know like you said 200 or so content creators that are doing this type of content well you know that that may poke out and catch their eye more than somebody else's like yeah. educational video or more than somebody else's you know news video or whatever it may be that is just a straight up title of exactly what it is and so yeah, being a content creator is not easy. And, you know, I think a lot of people who are doing it right now are doing it because they do truly believe in the space. They they love their community. They love what we're, they're, what they're doing, like like we do. Uh, otherwise, they would have been, they're gone. They're the ones For who sure. don't, they were just trying to come up real quick, who did maybe even get 50,000, 100,000 subs. They're gone, man. The scammers, they, they shook out because they're just, there's no one to scam anymore. All the people who got scammed now have been scammed. They've gone through it. They've understood. They've learned. They've grown, you know, and I think that's hopefully due to people like me and you who try and help people avoid scams and avoid some of this, this stuff that, that are easy pitfalls for beginners coming into the space. We yeah. say it all the time. Not your keys, not your crypto. Just yep. protect, protect your keys. Got to protect true. Them. It's funny. It's um, true. I was at, I was at church on Sunday and I'm in a little small group at my church. And uh, we were, we were talking about uh, the monopoly 
Uh, do you guys know this? The the Monopoly game at McDonald's was rigged for like ten years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it was a crazy story. I couldn't believe somebody in there like knew the story, you know. And then some guy who knows I was into crypto, he was like, "Wait, did you hear about that crazy like guy who died and lost all the crypto?" And he was talking about the Quadriga stuff. Yeah, you know, on the exchange or whatever. that made big news, man. I had I had yeah. non crypto people ask me about that. Yeah, I did. I several. I've had several non crypto. Uh, mm -hmm. My direct TV guy who came and installed my direct TV at my new house, <laughs> uh, you know, he's like, oh, you're into crypto. You know, he saw one of my BitBoy hats or whatever. And like people think mm. it's just a Bitcoin symbol that don't know anything about Bitcoin. Sure. And uh, asked me about it. And I, you know, he was like, what about this exchange thing? Or, you know, somebody asked me, a uh, family member asked me about it. And then somebody at church asked me about it. And it was just like so much, man, of, you know, uh, that story getting out. And it just really, the guy, so in the small group I was in, he tried to, communicate the story to the rest of the people in the small group. And he knows a little bit about crypto. He's invested a little right. bit. I've known the guy for a while. And uh, he said, he said, it's kind of like if you had a password and then you died and didn't give the password to anybody. I was like, Oh yeah, it's pretty much. Yeah. Pretty close. You know, we, we say private keys, but to your average person, like they just, you it's know, just a password. It's a password. Yeah. Essentially. So a really long, crazy, you know, <laughs> jumbled the uh, password. It's uh, yeah. It never memorized. Right, and so that's when, when I do when I try and do educational stuff, I try and relate things that we that most people know in, into crypto terms like that. And so you know, in like a lot of my presentations and some of the, the the courses and stuff that I do, that's the way I kind of approach it. You know, here's here's kind of what you already know. Here's how it is now. Here's why this sucks now, and here's why this is better. How it kind of relates. Yeah. And so yeah, I mean that's a pretty simple way of, of people saying it. it's like. Well, hey, what if you know you uh, had a a safe deposit box and then you lost the key? And no one could ever get it because you're the only one that has the key, and they just they won't they won't release it. Mm. The bank the bank's never going to give it to anybody else because you know you know. And I mean, obviously, there's there's things in place for stuff like that, but but similar happens with like a will. You think about like people who don't leave a will and they have all this huge estate, and then like, well, what happens? Well, now the ten family members go to court and they're suing each other to get all the money, and you know, it's a shit show. So or they have a lot of debt. <laughs> yeah, know, or they have a lot of debt. They kind of figure, yeah, nobody wants that. Nobody wants to take that on. Well, cool, guys. Well, I guess that brings us to the ep uh, end of the episode here. So, uh, Stash, tell everybody where they can find you at. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, you guys can find me on my website. That's my my home base. That's where I'm at. All my content is there. It's CryptoStash.com. It's uh, S-T-A-C-H-E, like mustache.com. And then you can find me on YouTube. Uh, you can de definitely get my YouTube channel direct there. And I'm on Crypto Twitter as well. Uh, and places like steam it and facebook and it's all at crypto stash so you can find me there and uh, definitely go join uh, uh join my my club too uh we call it the stash club and we, we it's a the little community we're building and you can sign up on my website there and, and you get my uh you know emails and try and help you with uh any of the things that you need help with very approachable awesome awesome that's great yeah thanks it, was for great. It, was, it was great to have you on it was great to hear you know kind of what you're doing um we appreciate it and actually would love to talk to you again sometime. Uh, we are going to do a contest this week. We haven't done a contest in a while, right? It's been a hot second. All right. Is that I a ledger? Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. All right. We're going to give one of these away this week. We'll have all the details for the, uh, all the details in the post of the show. Love me a good giveaway, guys. Love doing the giveaways. They're fun. Oh yeah. It is Definitely. fun. It gets, gets people excited in a bear market. Yeah. Give you something to look forward to. Here's here's this hardware wallet where you can hold all of the coins you don't have. <laughs> yeah, that you want to have, that you can learn how to store on there. There yes. you go. There you go. Keep and do it. heard uh, Cardano support on the ledger is supposed to be coming fairly soon. So that's oh, right. why Charles Hoskins and talking about that last night on uh, Crypto Candor's uh, channel. So, well, I guess that is all that we got for today. You guys be watching out for our contest. Thank you to the stash. For joining us, big shout out to our uh, crypto Twitter shout out segment sponsor, monarchtoken.io. Monarch. We will, we will see you guys later. We will see you next time. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for listening to Beards and Bitcoins. If you like what you heard, show these guys some love and rate review on SoundCloud or iTunes. Also, remember you can always find the guys on social media. The show Twitter page is at Beards Bitcoins. You'll find direct links to BitBoy and JChains from there. Make sure you check for updates, announcements, and contests. Good luck to all who enter. 
See you next time.